I can't believe I've never made a video on this topic before because it is arguably one of the most important parts about making pottery. Okay, I have mentioned this in many videos in the past, but this discussion really warrants its own video. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about how you can make your pottery food safe, dishwasher safe, and microwave safe. And this all has to do with vitrification. But before I get into that, that is not the only thing that contributes to food safety, microwave safety and dishwasher safety. For food safety, your glazes also need to be food safe glazes, meaning that they do not contain any harmful materials such as lead and also that the glazes are chemically stable and won't leach into your food. If you're not mixing your glazes from scratch and rather buying pre-made glazes, your glaze manufacturer will be able to tell you whether or not they are food safe or not. There's usually a little symbol on the glaze somewhere that says that it's food safe, but when in doubt, definitely reach out to the glaze producer. When it comes to dishwasher safety, in addition to vitrification, your pottery won't be dishwasher safe if it has decals or lusters applied. And that's simply because these things are not fired to that very high temperature and they can easily get damaged or like fade in the dishwasher. As for microwaves, the main thing you want to look out for is lusters because you do not want to put metal in the microwave and there is metal content in these metallic glaze lusters. But none of these things matter if your pottery is not vitrified. So what does vitrification mean? Digitalfire.com says it best, vitrified ware has been fired to a high enough temperature to impart a practical level of strength and durability for the intended purpose. In simple terms, that means that your clay has been fired high enough to be practically watertight. This is the point that your clay has achieved the desired amount of porosity. Your ceramic does not technically need to be at 0% porosity to be considered vitrified. This all depends on your clay and your pottery's intended use. For example, stoneware clay may be considered to be vitrified at 1.5% porosity, whereas porcelain may be 0% and earthenware all the way up to 3 to 5% water absorption. By the way, if you're wondering how these percentages are calculated and how you can do it yourself at home, what you need to do is weigh your pottery precisely make a note of that, and then boil your pottery in water. What that's going to do is it's going to force your pottery to absorb as much water as it possibly can hold, and then you want to weigh it again. Compare these two weights, and that's how you calculate your percentage of porosity. So we're gonna test the porosity of this little cup here. Welcome to my kitchen. Please excuse, <laughs> we're mid-renovation mid still. So I'm gonna fill this pot with boiling water. Okay, well that's boiling. I'm going to measure the weight of this. I don't have an extremely accurate scale. Uh, this is just a kitchen scale, but it's what I use for also mixing glazes and stuff. So it should be pretty good. So it's 229 grams. So I'm just gonna pop my cup in and cook my cup. <laughs> There's a bunch of like conflicting information on the internet about this. I decided to go for 10 minutes of boiling, hoping that's enough. The boiling helps to kind of like force the clay to absorb as much as possible. So I'm hoping 10 minutes is enough time. Hopefully I don't crack my pot. This is my strategy for getting it out <laughs> without burning myself. Hmm. I'm just gonna let it cool off a tiny bit so that it doesn't melt my scale. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, look at this vitrified ceramic. <laughs> 229, which means this guy is waterproof. 229 over 229, 0% porosity, we're good. So how does vitrification work? I find it helpful to think about it on the particulate level. Your clay is made up of all these different size particles, and before it's fired, your clay has a lot of space between those particles. When it's wet clay, that space is filled with water. When it's bone dry, it's just air. 
This is also why pieces that are bone dry are so extremely fragile because of the porousness of the clay. And also why bone dry will melt down very quickly if it's exposed to water. When your clay is put into the kiln and fired to that very high temperature, anywhere from 1000 to 1300 degrees Celsius, the clay particles melt, slowly filling all of the gaps. At a high enough temperature, these particles will melt completely. This, by the way, is also why your pottery shrinks in the kiln. So why not fire all clays hotter to achieve that 0% porosity? Well, depending on the clay, this might cause other issues. Less refined clays like earthenware, for example, may have issues like floating, warping, or even melting beyond a certain temperature. This makes it unrealistic to fire these clays up to the point of 0% porosity. Not to say that these clays do not have their issues, as a sculptor, for example, you can save yourself a lot of money on your electrical bills by using earthenware clay and firing to that lower temperature. And that's just one advantage. There's loads of advantages, and earthenware clay definitely has its place in ceramics. And let's not forget that humans have not always had electrical kilns, and we have and continue to use earthenware pottery for all sorts of purposes. I might get flayed in the comments for this, but I do want to point out that humans have been eating and drinking out of earthenware ceramic for literally tens of thousands of years. Today's hygiene culture won't let me say that these things are food safe, and honestly, they're not. You are taking a risk when you're consuming food out of these porous vessels. You could get sick. Is it likely? That's another topic. But I do think we need to acknowledge the colonialist undertones of the absolute fervor that certain potters have towards making earthenware tableware. Who knew pottery could be so political? Am I saying it's fine to sell earthenware pottery as tableware? I personally would not do that, but I would and have used earthenware pottery as tableware myself. Although it is definitely more likely to crack or chip over time, and I definitely would not put these things in the dishwasher. So if that's the case, what are the practicalities of vitrification? What am I hoping for you to get out of this whole thing? What I want you to do is simple. Literally read the firing temperatures and the instructions on your clay bag and fire to those temperatures. That's it. If it's anyhow unclear or the clay doesn't list the vitrification temperature at all, definitely feel welcome to reach out to your clay manufacturer and ask them. Anyone who doesn't know the clay vitrification temperature of the clay that they're selling, I would not buy from them. So how does vitrification affect food safety specifically? Simply said, if your tableware is porous, it will absorb water and that will bring food particles with it. Over time, these particles may rot and that mold can leach into your food. That's it. That's why unvitrified ceramic is not considered food safe. But why shouldn't you put unvitrified ceramic in the microwave or the dishwasher? Think about your unvitrified ceramic like a sponge. If you submerge it in water or you have a coffee out of it or something, there's going to be water content in your clay. And for a microwave, the way it works is it heats from the inside out. So the water content that is in the walls of your mug is going to turn into vapor and going to need to get out somehow. And this is why it's likely to crack. If for whatever reason you never expose your unvitrified ceramic to water, like it's always gonna be dry, then it's actually okay to put it in the microwave. But I don't think that that applies to tableware and I'm not sure why you would be putting non-tableware stuff in the microwave. And the dishwasher is a similar thing. So basically the water gets into your clay and it will slowly break down the ceramic from the inside out. The detergents in the dishwasher are also pretty powerful and the hot water is going to add to the water absorption. Now, is putting earthenware ceramics in the dishwasher or the microwave going to explode and destroy your appliance? Probably not, but it is going to definitely decrease the life of your ceramics. Now, a little bit of water absorption is considered fine. This is why potters typically consider stoneware to be dishwasher, microwave, and food safe. 99% of the ceramics that I use at home are stoneware and I put them in the dishwasher every day. I'm pretty sure you do that too. And I don't just mean handmade ceramics, like most industrially factory made ceramics is also stoneware. So basically it's a spectrum of risk. Is porcelain going to be the safest thing to put in your dishwasher? Yes, it's probably going to hold up longer than stoneware will, but that's true in general. Porcelain is a more dense and strong ceramic, so that's true about everything, dropping it on the floor included. 
The last thing I want to talk about is something that has nothing to do with vitrification, but it is really important for food safety. That is glaze fit crazing and crackle glazes. So depending on the cultural circles that you exist in, potters in your area may consider crackle or crazed glazes 1000% not food safe, reckless to use and irresponsible to sell. The idea, which admittedly is not totally without its logic, is that bacteria can get into those cracks build up and leach into your food. I hear you, you do not need to write in the comments about this. I know a lot of people very strongly believe this to be true. Obviously we don't want our pottery to craze, unless we wanted to, and in that case it's considered crackle or crackle glazes. But the question here is, are these glazes food safe? Dr. Ryan Coppage of the University of Richmond did an amazing study of looking at crazed ceramic surfaces underneath a microscope. In his article published in Ceramics Monthly, he states, while non-crazed surfaces do demonstrate cleaner results in this survival study, even non-crazed surfaces can retain bacteria on wiped and dried surfaces. Additionally, the use of heat, soap, and water kills or removes bacteria in even crazed surfaces though they are commonly and mistakenly thought to be totally non-food safe. And while this is only one study, I do want to point out the fact that humans have been eating and drinking out of crazed glazes for literally tens of thousands of years. And while there is no surety because this is science, I'm personally not going to worry about it. And yes, people have been using lead in glazes for thousands of years too, and we now know it's bad. I know that this tens of thousands of years argument is not fully waterproof. I know that. You can make your own decision about this. I'm just one potter on YouTube telling you my perspective. I will link the article from Ceramics Monthly that I quoted from down below and also an additional article on this topic from Digital Fire that I also found helpful. They're down in the description and please feel free to do your own research. So let me know what you think about all this down below in the comments. Feel free to sound off about why the heck I am totally wrong and irresponsible. Go ahead, I'm waiting. <laughs> but if you're not interested in fighting me, I am curious if you do use earthenware for tableware and what your perspectives are on this, or do you use stoneware for sculpture? I'm curious why you would make that decision or like what clay do you use? Why do you use that clay? I hope that that was helpful. If you have any questions, you can write them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If this video was interesting for you, you might want to check out this video that's all about cracks and how to prevent them. That's including the crazing that I was referring to. So so definitely go check that out if you want. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.